Amen. Isn't he awesome? Thank you, Jesus. Is anybody glad to be here on a Wednesday evening? Amen. What a great God. What a great God. They were singing that song about entering into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. There is a certain way that you and I are supposed to approach an almighty God. David understood this. It's why when he finally did things right, he brought that ark back in every six paces. He would stop and he would praise God and they would make a sacrifice and he did that all the way into the city. You see, in ancient times, the custom was that if you were supposed, if you were going before uh, someone of importance, especially a king, you were supposed to bring them a gift. This is why Saul, when he was out searching for those lost donkeys, uh, and his servant spoke to him and said, there is a man named Samuel here, and he's a prophet of God. He said, we can go to him, and he can tell us where those donkeys are. And Saul said, we don't have anything to bring him because he knew and everybody in all of Israel understood that if you're going to go before the king, you've got to go a certain way. And the Bible tells us that we have a king that's king of kings and is Lord of lords. And if we're going to go into his presence, if we're going to go before him, we've got to go a certain way. We've got to enter in with thanksgiving. That's when I say, God, I'm thankful for everything you've done for me. You've been so good to me. You've blessed me beyond measure. You've made a way where there was no way. You picked me up out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay. I may not understand it all right now and may not agree with everything that I'm going through, but God, I am thankful that you took the time to bring me out of darkness and into your marvelous light. We enter into his gates with thanksgiving given and the Bible says into his courts with praise you see first you have to go through the gates it's the place where everybody walks through and after you get through the gates and you begin to make your way in towards the house then you come into the courts amen and that's a little bit closer to the presence of God and when you get a little bit closer you move from thankfulness into a place of praise that's where you just lift up your heart and you begin to magnify him and to give him glory for all that is done for all the days that he's kept you for every time that he's brought you back when you went astray for every time he picked you up when you had fallen and he grabbed you by the hand and he put you back on that straight and narrow path and he made a way where there seemed to be no way that's where you and I take time to lift him up and to give him praise for going to Calvary for hanging on that cross so that you and I could be here today in 2021 and be able to call upon his name you see there is a place of praise that will begin to get you and I into the presence of an almighty God so that he can begin to work in our lives you can be seated thank you amen I I, I found out before service that I was going to be preached tonight brother John Warren was supposed to preach and uh, as brother Shannon mentioned sister Emily had to go to the ER with severe uh, stomach pain. So I was praying and I felt direction for this service. And as I was down here praying I, and, and just worshiping and singing, I, I felt before I get into that, I, I just want to make mention tonight about the presence of God. As Shannon was naming all of those names on the prayer list, we've got some great needs. We've got people that need salvation people that need healing, people that need deliverance, whatever it is, whatever illness, whatever disease you can think of tonight, we each know people here that fit into that category, don't we? And I was thinking how it's not just the people out there that we know of that need prayer, but there are people in this very house tonight that need a touch from God. If you're here and you need deliverance or healing or strength, or direction, or comfort, or salvation, would you lift your hands? Anybody? We all fit into that category, don't we? Amen. And the Bible says that the only place, y'all can be seated. The Bible says that the only place that you and I can find deliverance, 
that we can find strength, that we can find whatever it is that we're searching for is in the presence of an almighty God. And we can come into this house and we can go through all of the motions We can look at the screen and we can sing along with all the words. We know when to lift our hands. Amen. We know when to be silent. We know when to be seated. We know when to stand. We know when to clap. We're all so familiar with all of the things that we we normally do in a church service. Amen. But I, I wonder, as we were singing and I was looking across this building, not just pointing anybody out, myself in particular, I was thinking, are we really trying to get into the presence of God? Did we come here tonight just because it's what we do on a Wednesday? Or did we come here tonight because we know there is an almighty God in this place? And I've got things going on in my life that I need him to touch. I've got situations that only he can deliver me out of. I've got needs that only he can provide for. Amen. I've got illnesses and sicknesses in my body that that nobody else can do a thing about. The doctor doesn't have control over it. He can't deliver me from it. But I know that there is a God in this place tonight that has all power. Amen. I wonder, did we come here tonight thinking, in those things or did we come here simply so we could hear a few songs hear a good sermon preached and then go about our merry way and finish our week out and maybe come back on Sunday when everybody's here when pastors here and when maybe the best singers are here and maybe the best service leaders here maybe the best preacher is here amen and say I'm going to get my blessing then I'm going to hold on through the week until Sunday comes to see if maybe I can get deliverance then if you're like me I've come to the house on a Wednesday night before and I've said that to myself and I've thought those things and I've felt that way amen but as I was thinking tonight as we were singing about an awesome God and we were singing about a mighty God we were singing about a God that has all power I couldn't help but think about how he brought me out of the horrible pit and he set my feet up on a rock and he established my goings and the Bible says that the steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord if you and I are are here tonight it means that God has kept us it means that he has provided for us it means that he has worked miracles and signs and wonders for us and if we are here tonight that also means that we are still in need of miracles and signs and wonders we still have illnesses we still have situations that we need God to work in we still got lost family amen we still need deliverance we still need healing amen we John it couldn't be here tonight because he had to leave at this very moment to go take care of his wife who was being rushed to the emergency room. We have immediate needs in our lives that we need God to touch right now. But I fear that we become so comfortable sometimes coming into the house of God saying if God just doesn't break out, if God just doesn't force it on me, I'm just going to lift my hands. I'm going to sing when I need to. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to praise when I'm supposed to. And then I'm going to hear the preaching. But if God doesn't just do something miraculous and get a hold of me then I'm going to leave the same way that I've come and I want to tell you tonight that that is not how it works in the kingdom of God you can't just come here tonight and expect to go through the motions and have God step out of heaven and step down into the midst of this place and begin to work miracle signs and wonders the Bible says if you and I are going to enter into the presence of an almighty God and in his presence the Bible says there is fullness of joy whatever it is that you have need of tonight it can only take place in the presence of an almighty God it's not going to happen outside the gates it's not going to happen outside the promised land but it's going to take you and I deliberately picking up our feet and marching towards the house of God and going through those gates with thanksgiving and entering into those courts with praise and lifting up our hands and giving him thanks it's going to take you and I having a desperate spirit tonight to where we say, God, I have dealt with this thing long enough. I've suffered long enough. I've hurt long enough. And I'm tired of living this way. I'm tired of my family being lost. I'm tired of this suffering that's going on in my world. And something's got to change tonight. And until you get that desperate, like blind Bartholomew,
Bartimaeus sitting by the wayside when they, they, he called to Jesus and everybody tried to tell him to be quiet and he said no I've got to have a change tonight I've got something that I've been dealing with for far too long the same could be said about that lady with the infirmity of blood the Bible says that she has, had spent all of her money at the physicians everything that she knew to do she did it and still she was worse off in the end she had spent all of her money all of her health was gone and she was hurting so bad the Bible says that she was bowed over she could in no wise lift up herself and maybe you've come in here feeling a little bit like that tonight whether it's in your body or in your spirit or in your mind and you just feel like I can't go on another day I can't even lift myself up let alone lift my hands up and give God praise I want to tell you that it can all change tonight in this house whatever you came in here dealing with you can cast it at the feet of an almighty God and you can find deliverance you can find healing but it's not going to happen in the way that you think it's going to happen where God just comes down and he overpowers you and he just touches you and heals you you've got to come to him crying just like blind Bartimaeus just like that woman with the infirmity I've got to make up in my mind that I'm ready for deliverance that I'm ready for a healing and nothing is going to stand in my way and I'm going to get to the feet of Jesus at whatever the cost is whatever the price is whatever I have to pay whatever I have to do I'm just going to get to the feet of Jesus tonight so that he can work a miracle in me and until you have that kind of attitude and that kind of determined spirit you will stay in that same place of comfort you will stay in that same place of hurt you will you will continue in that pain that you've endured until something gets into your heart your mind and your spirit and you say I just can't go on any longer something's got to change Amen. I, I didn't come to here tonight to try to preach some, some great sermon to you. Amen. More than anything, more than anything, I want to see God move in this place tonight. I don't, I don't care if I preach for five minutes or 30 minutes or I don't have an axe to grind. I don't have anything to prove to anybody here today, but I just feel like in my spirit, if we would reach out to God, if we would get a hold of Him, if, if we would just make up in our minds, I'm not going to stay in my comfort zone tonight. Amen. I'm not going to just keep carrying this thing another week. I'm not going to continue on in my pain. And if we would enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise and we would begin to magnify him, I believe that that would be that sweet savor that the Bible talks about that, that draws God in. And I believe he could work in this place even though it's just another Wednesday night and maybe half the church is gone. It doesn't matter because the Bible says where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I in the midst of them and we've got at least two or three in this house tonight and if we could bind together in agreement and call on the name of Jesus we could leave here changed we could leave here different. We could leave here with strength. Amen. I, and, and I know because we just took a poll. We just took a vote. And everybody almost in this house lifted your hand and said, I need something from God. Whether it's healing or salvation or deliverance, whatever it is. Almost all of us lifted our hands tonight and said, I've got a situation that I need God to work in. And I've come to tell you tonight, amen, that if you want deliverance, there is a God that is in this house. He, you don't have to wait till tomorrow. You don't have to wait till next week. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's the God which is, which was, and which is to come. That means he's the God here on a Wednesday night. Amen. When I don't really feel like lifting my hands and giving him praise. He's the same on a Wednesday night. When I think I can just come and do him a lip service and go home and put my focus into this coming Sunday. He's the same God in this place on a Wednesday night as he was last Sunday or any Sunday service that we've had you think about the most powerful power packed service that we've had and we've had some good ones we serve the God that is the same today as he was in the midst of the greatest moves that you've ever seen amen amen and I wonder tonight can we maybe step out of our comfort zone can we maybe try to get into the presence of God can we, can we maybe just forget about everything else that's going on? Is there anybody here tonight that you've just got a need, that you need God to work in before you leave this house? 
that you, you just say, I can't go on. I can't carry this another day. I've battled it long enough. I've struggled long enough. Can we, can we stand to our feet for a moment? Can we just lift our hands for a moment? Can we just cry out to God? Amen. I want every one of us here today, from the bottom of our hearts, let's lift our voice. Let's cry out to Him. Come on. It's not, there's nothing that I can do for you. There's nothing that a preacher can do for you. I wish I could heal you. I wish I could deliver you because I'd do it to everybody in this place tonight. But there is a God who still sits on the throne today. He still has all power. He is still able able to meet you exactly where you are and do exactly what you need in this house tonight. Oh, let's take a moment. Come on, before we move any further, let's lift our hands, lift our hearts. God, we want you to have your way in this place tonight. Open every heart, open every soul. God, help us to not settle for lukewarmness. Help us to not settle for mediocrity, for another Wednesday night service, God. Oh, but God, there are people here tonight that are hurting in their bodies. That in no wise can they lift up themselves. There are people that are hurting in their spirit, God. Oh, we need need you to work in the midst of us. We need you to touch us here tonight in this place. Oh God, we don't want to go another day. We don't want to go another moment, God, unless you can do something in our lives. Oh God, give us the strength that we need. Give us the direction that we need. God, give us the healing, the help that we need tonight in this place. Oh, it's why we've come. God, we've come tonight so that we could get into your presence. That's why we sang about it. We want to get into your courts. We want to get into that most secret place with you. Just as David said, one thing have I desired of the Lord and that will I seek after all the days of my life that I may dwell in the house of the Lord to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. I just want to be in that secret place with him because it's in his presence that he can bless us. It's only in his presence that he can work in our lives. It's only in his presence that that he can touch our hearts and minds and bring deliverance and bring healing. It's only in his presence that everything can change and you and I can walk out of here different than we've come in tonight. Oh, we love you, Jesus. We praise your holy, mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God, open our hearts. Open our minds. Help us to be in tune with you. Help us to be led by your spirit, Jesus. Oh, in your holy name. Come on, why don't we, while we're all up praying, let's take a moment right now. Let's pray for Emily Warren that God would just touch her. God, we pray that you give strength into her body. Make her whole and perfect from this moment forward. Oh, we command healing to go into her body. We take authority over any sickness, anything that is in her that's working against her health. We bind it and rebuke it in Jesus' name. Oh, God, I pray that you give peace to her. Give peace to John, to the family for whatever they're facing right now. Oh God, just let your perfect will be done. Let your perfect will be done in Jesus' holy name. In Jesus' holy mighty name. Oh God, let it be done right now. Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I was listening to one of my favorite preachers the other day. His name's Josh Herring. And someone spoke a word to him and said the, said the devil is not the most worried about the miracles or the signs or the wonders and the deliverance, the healing, all those things that take place in service when you're preaching. He said the thing that the devil is the most afraid of is that you're an intercessor. He said it's because you have found a place in prayer and you know how to get a hold of God. And, and that's where the chains are broken. Amen. That's where authority in the Holy Ghost comes from. From prayer and from fasting. Amen. I wonder is there any intercessors in this place tonight? Oh, if there's anything that we need a revival of, it's an intercessory spirit where we would just get a, get a hold of God in our hearts and just be able to go on behalf of our brothers and sisters that are hurting. Come on, we need somebody in the church today that knows how to pray. We need people that know how to get a hold of God. That's the thing that's going to set us free. That's the thing that's going to make us overcomers. We've got to learn how to intercede. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
God, you're great, you're great, you're holy, you're wonderful. There's none like you, Jesus. Have your perfect way in this place today. Oh, God, pour out your spirit. Bind us together in one mind and in one accord. God, help us to work together as the body of Christ that you've called us to be. I pray you'll grant unto your servants boldness to speak your word by stretching forth your hand to heal and work in miracles, signs, and wonders. Oh, we love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, everything that you need today, it's in that mighty name. It's in that mighty name. There's no name like the name of Jesus. There's nobody like Jesus. Whatever you need in your life today, you can find it in Jesus. Amen. We didn't take the time to read the scripture, but you see it on the, on the screen there. Unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulder. His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Come on, everything that we need today, we can find it in Jesus. Oh, he is wonderful, isn't he? The Bible says that he stepped out of glory and he, he put on human flesh. He robed himself. He was manifest in flesh. And he walked this earth so that you and I could be forgiven. He walked this earth so that he could die, so that he could suffer, so that he could be lifted up on that cross and bring deliverance for you and I. He is wonderful, and he is our counselor. Amen. There's a lot of counselors out there in the world, and I'm not knocking them. They've all got their place, but there is no counselor like Jesus. When you're troubled in your mind when you're troubled in your spirit and you just don't know what to do you don't know which way to turn you don't know how everything's going to work out there is one that you can go to and he's not just one that you can pour your problems out on but he is one that has answers and he can speak back to you and as no other counselor can he can give you a word in a night season he can give you a word when you're troubled and he can give you a word that can sustain you through the storm and through the fire that you're in so you can come out on that other side and be safe oh that's the God that we know that's the God that we know today he's a mighty God the Bible says there's no God like our God he kills and he makes alive he wounds and he heals he has all power he has all knowledge there is nothing that is too hard for him he has you and I in the palm of his hand today and no man the Bible says can pluck us out he is the mighty God the most high God the everlasting God the God which is which was and which is to come the Bible says that the train of his robe fills the temple that means that every every king that has come up against him has been defeated and as the custom was in those old days if you lost to another king they would cut off your robe and they would sew it onto the winning king the, 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 his robe fills the temple the bible says because he has defeated every enemy he's defeated every king there is none that can stand against your God and no matter what you're facing in your life you've got a king of kings and a lord of lords and he's in your corner and he knows what you're going through he's not going to leave you in the battle amen but he's going to come to you when you're weary and you feel like you can't go on and he'll lift you up he'll strengthen you and he'll put you back on the right path and he'll put a sword in your hand and he'll give you that shield of faith so that you can go out there and conquer the enemy that's the kind of god that we serve Come on, it's all in Him. Everything that you need today. Everything that you need. He's the everlasting Father, the Word says. I don't know about you, but my father left when I was a little boy. I was four years old, and he left. And I had no father in place of Him. But I found a father when I came the house of God. I found a father that never fails. I found a father that never leaves me. A father that will never forsake me. And he'll never put on me more than I can bear. And with every temptation, the Bible says he makes a way of escape. 
We have an everlasting Father. And no matter what you're facing, no matter your troubles, you can go to Him. And just as if you were a little boy or girl and you would crawl up on your Father's lap and begin to talk to Him and tell Him about your troubles and tell Him about your hard times, He would speak back to you in that oh so soft and sweet voice and tell you everything's going to be okay. Everything's going to be all right because Daddy's here now. Amen. We got a dad that's on our side. Amen. And he's looking down at some of us that are confused and hurting who are maybe troubled in your mind. And he's saying, I know it's a hard time right now. I know you're going through some things, but everything's going to be okay because your daddy's here now. Amen. Your daddy's here and he's got all power and nobody can harm you anymore. And I'm going to fight for you. We've got a father that will stand for us. Amen. He'll do everything that you need him to do. He's, he's an on time God. He's an ever present help in our time of need. The Bible says he's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Aren't you glad to know a God like him? Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. The last thing he is, he is our Prince of Peace. Has anybody here ever needed peace in your life? Amen. That's why I came to the house of God. Amen. The night before I first went into a Pentecostal service, I was asleep that night on a, on a, on a mattress that was laying on the floor in a friend's house. And, and, and something woke me up and had a hold of my throat. And I, I felt something setting on my chest. And I felt like I was about to die. Have you ever heard them say that your life will flash before your eyes? Amen. I, I started to see my whole life flashing before my eyes. Amen. And, and in that instant, I prayed and I called on God and that thing left whatever it was. And when I woke up that next morning, I knew that things were about to change. I knew that the enemy didn't like the decision that I was making to go to church and he was doing whatever he could to try to keep me out. But I was a 19 year old troubled youth and I I had all kinds of chaos going on in my mind. Have you ever been there? I was down in that miry clay. I was down in that darkness. Amen. But I came into the house of God and when I stepped into the foyer tears began to flow down my face because I knew that things were about to change and I was in the presence of a God that could work in my situation. He could work in that chaos. He could work in that darkness that I was in and bring me out and he put peace in my mind he put peace in my heart amen and like the like the scripture says it's a peace that passes all understanding I don't know how I have peace sometimes when I do when the when the storms of life are raging and when everything seems to be chaotic I still have peace in my heart I still have peace in my mind and I've got peace in my family that's not because of some kind of willpower that I have to make it happen that's because I know an almighty God that sees where I am and he is a prince of peace, the Bible says. And he is able to give peace to them that are hurting. Peace to them that are struggling. Amen. I don't know if that's ever been you, but that was me in my life. And I was down in the darkness. I was down in the depths. But he has been good to me. Can anybody say that? Can our musicians come? Amen. I, I didn't come to preach a sermon tonight. I just, wanted to, I just wanted to get a hold of our hearts, reach for your heart, and say, I know that you're struggling with some things. I know you've got some situations in your life that you need God to work in that nobody can do anything else about. And nothing's ever going to change if you just keep coming to service. Service after service saying, I'm just waiting on God. I'm just waiting for God to step down. I'm just waiting for Him to knock me out and I'll roll across this floor or do whatever it is. That's not how it works. God is, is waiting on you and I. He's waiting for us to get desperate. He's waiting for us to get so hungry that we say, I can't live like this another day. I can't walk out of this house today without getting a hold of him without finding some kind of deliverance there have to be some services where you and I come to the house of God and we get a hold of those horns of the altar and we refuse to leave until we're changed until whatever bondage it is has been broken off our lives until whatever addiction it is that we're struggling with 
that yoke has been broken and we've been set free. There have to be some times when we come into the house of God and we say, I don't care what anybody else is going to do. I don't care if they lift their hands. I don't care if they shout, but I'm going to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and I'm going to enter into his courts with praise because I've got to get a hold of him today. I've got to go before the king. I've got to get into his presence so that he can do something in me. Oh, does anybody feel like that tonight? Maybe you've reached a place in your spirit where you're desperate. And you know that God has got to do something right now. If you feel that way, can you make your way down to the front? Or if you don't feel that way and you just want to find a place to pray, can we just lift our hearts, our hands? Come on, let's call out to God. That's the whole purpose that we came tonight. It wasn't to sing a few songs and to hear some preaching. And that's the will of God. But it was so that you and I could come and get into the presence of an almighty God. So that we could leave different. So that we can leave changed so that we can leave with strength on our lives because when we face our tomorrows whatever it is that we're going through we're going to need to be touched in this service here tonight we're going to need to be changed here tonight so that God can strengthen us and so that we can walk another day amen the whole goal is so that we can walk on streets of gold hear those words well done thou good and faithful servant enter thou into the joy of the Lord And if that's ever going to happen, there's going to be some miracles that must take place in our life. There's going to be some signs that are going to have to happen. There's going to have to be some encounters with God where we forgot about everything else and just got a hold of Him and sought Him so that He could change us and work in us. Oh, let's lift our hands. Let's lift our hearts right now. Come on. Oh, all across this place, God. Oh, we need you. We need you, God, to do a work in us. We need your strength tonight, Jesus. We can't go another day without you. It's only by your strength. It's only by your power that we've even made it here to this service tonight. God, we need you to do something.